All right, welcome back to new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we are going to look at this uh, funky camera effect that you can see here. And this is done using the face track chop. So basically, this is our network. Uh, this is the face track chop using the input from our webcam. And then we're just kind of using the face tracking to crop away the image based on the face position. So wherever our face is going to be cropped around it. And then we're also doing instancing, copying all of these textures. So we're doing some post-processing, then we're copying that with instancing. And that instance data is also based on the face tracking position. So it all kind of follows my movement. And yeah, it's a really fun thing. My original inspiration is this movie right here. And I think it's it, it just looks super cool. And especially if you use it in a kind of an installation context where you have a better background than I do right now, a better lighting, uh, that can really add something to this. And there's quite a lot of flexibility. So without further ado, let's just get started and dive into it. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything as always. And we're going to start with a video device in. On my video device, I want to use the highest format that I can get here. So that's 1280p by 30 hertz right now for me with my web webcam. And then I'm going to add a flip to this because otherwise it feels very strange if you don't flip it on the X. So um, yeah, it just kind of moves into the right direction. It's not mirrored. So I'm going to add a null to this. And from here, we're going to keep on working. So I'm going to call this cam and just give it like a violet color. This is like the main top pretty much where everything's coming from. Then I'm going to use a face track chop here I'm going to add a face track and use my cam on that. So you can just type that in here if you like. Um, so the top that is defined in here is going to be wherever the face track chop gets its data from. So there's a bunch of options that you can do. You can have, you can show all of the different landmarks. So like, you know, like all the different parts so you can show or create a mask with instancing or something. We're not really interested in that. We're only interested in these four values, five values that we can see right here. We don't even need aspect correct UVs. We can just kind of work with it the way it is. I'm going to give it a red color uh, because it's kind of the main thing that's going on here. I'm going to add a filter as well and change that to one euro effect point five to just to kind of smooth out everything a bit. I'm going to add a null and I'm just going to call this face tracking and give this like a green color. It's kind of, you know, where, where all our data is going to export from. So the next step would be to add a crop here because we want to crop the face as I showed in the beginning. So we can crop that manually just so you can see what's happening here. We just kind of want to achieve something like that. But now when I move my face, it doesn't really follow, obviously, because it's kind of, you know, static, not dynamic. So let's make that dynamic. And we can do that by adding a select here and using that face tracking. So now I want to use uh, Bbox U. I'm just going to copy this a bunch of times because I want to Actually, let me just move all of this up here. I want to select different things. So here I want to use uh, the width on the second one. Then here I want to select V and then here I want to select the height. So U, width, V, height. And these kind of belong together. I'm going to add nulls to all of them. And I'm going to call these nulls different things. So first off, it's going to be crop the sides. And this is the width. Um, let's just call it crop width. And then crop TB for top and bottom. And then crop height. Okay, so now on a crop, let's use these values. So I'm going to use crop sides on both left and right. And now obviously you have the problem that we only have one pixel left because we're doing the same cropping left and right. So actually what we want to do is we want to add some sort of value here that makes sure that we go, that we have kind of a left and right padding sort of. So what I can do is do my, for example, minus 0.15 <laughs> and plus 0.15. And now that already works. So when I go left and right, it follows my face, which is super nice because it always crops 
and the same kind of you know there's this you can kind of imagine it like this is the like left of the face and this is right of the face and there's this kind of center here where where it shows the actual face so let's make that even more dynamic though so first off i'm just gonna change this to like zero here and zero here and then what i want to do is just type in minus op and then we do crop width and use channel zero again and now when i do the same thing here instead of the plus 1.5 do crop width then the cool thing is now, if you have a look, when I move further back, I feel a bit weird doing this. Um, then, and when I move closer, it actually kind of changes the width of the whole cropping. So uh, it really makes sure that it's always around your face, no matter how far you are. But it's on you if you want to make this dynamic or not. I definitely want to show you. So I'm just going to copy the first one here. And I'm going to type in crop TB for its crop top bottom and then minus crop height. And I'm just going to copy that, put that here and then do plus here. And now we have the same thing with the, with the height. First off, I might want to add a math here because uh, the top bottom part, as you can see, the center is actually very much on my nose, but the actual kind of center of my head is not my nose, but more like between my eyes. So I wanna move that up and I can just do that with the pre-add. So I can just kind of move it up like that. So what I wanna do now is add a fit afterwards because I always wanna have a square here. So I'm just gonna do fit outside and it's good to have that in kind of ready here so you can see if it crops right. So I think that works rather well. We might even want to push this up more, maybe 1.1 or less. I don't know, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. The fine tuning you can do on your own depending also on the conditions obviously, but this is kind of the, the idea, right? We have uh, an X and Y position, and we have a width and a height that we kind of add and subtract from that position. Okay, before we add more stuff here, uh, let's create the instancing network. And for that, I'm going to add a rectangle as well as a transform. And from there, I'm going to add a geo as well as a camera, as always. I want this camera to be orthographic and move it out a bit. I'm gonna add a render and change that resolution to full HD. I'm gonna add a constant material, put that on here and let's just add a null so we can see what's going on in the background. Okay, then I'm gonna add a composite as well as a select and I'm gonna select cam on here and I'm gonna change operation to over. So whatever we're rendering here, it's gonna be over our main input, which is the camera. So now what I wanna do is I wanna first off show my face on that material. So I'm just gonna call this uh, texture, like add a null, call it texture and just put it on there. On the material, I also wanna turn on blending. So we might wanna turn down the alpha maybe 2.7. So you can already kind of see that works, but it, it, it's not that great. What we want to do now is maybe first off, add a circle afterwards. And we want to multiply that with the input. So we're kind of cutting away only like even more, only the face. So I'm just gonna kind of scale it maybe up like that and maybe a bit down like that, maybe even like pull on. 0.5 here and then on the softness I'm going to go quite strong with like 0.6 maybe 0.5 maybe let's do like 4 here even 6 here something like that so you can really only see the face and then what we want to do is we want to create instances so I'm going to turn on instancing and we're going to add a circle saw I'm going to go down with divisions to like 10 and change this to open arc. We don't need normals. And then I'm gonna add a transform to this as well as a copy. 
And then I'm going to add a null and just call that pause for position as always. And we're going to use that on X and Y. So on my copy, I'm going to copy it three times and uniform scale 1.5. Then I want to maybe scale down the whole thing by 0.7. And then now you can see there's these faces around, but they're not actually moving to the position of my face. So to do that, I'm going to add a select. And we want to select U and then add a math and a null. And let's just call that circle X. And I'm going to copy and paste that. Let's select V here and let's call that circle Y. And here I want to change the range to minus 1.5 and 1.5. And here I want it to be minus 1 and 1. And now what I can do, I can use that on the translation of this of the rectangle x and y and now you can see it moves nicely with my face so it's already looking kind of cool we can uh, expand that and have even more faces if we like so for example after the transform we can add another copy saw and let's just copy this and uh, let's just go down the division to like seven and let's get rid of the transform for now and let's just put that in there. And then we have a lot more faces. If that's something that you like, you can also turn off the sec second copying. But for now, let's just work with, with that. So the thing is, especially when we have this turned on, that we can't see the original face anymore. So to make sure that we always see that nicely, what we can do is that we can add a ramp and make that circular, let it hold here. And let's just make this white and add another white one here. And the first one, we can just kind of go down with the, with the alpha. Maybe we can make that a bit bigger. And now you can see it kind of shows like that center part. But now it only shows in the, when my face when I'm in the very center. So to make sure that we always have the right position based on the face as well, again, we can use a select and uh, math and a null to, to do that. So math, now let's call this ramp class for ramp position. And let's just select U and V. And now let's just rearrange that to minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And let's use that on position X and position Y. So now when I move my face, you can see that ramp here is always moving wherever my face is. So that's very handy and it looks much, much nicer. So even if we do turn that off, it just completely makes sure that our face is always shown. And you can just kind of play around with these values, especially the alpha value here. So I can't see that well now, but um, if I go like down with the alpha, we can see the face. When I go up with the alpha, it kind of disappears. So you can play around with some things here. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. Another thing before we go into the post-processing might be that we want to change the scale of the face based on how far it, it's uh, from the camera. So if I go back, you can see my main face here, my <laughs> original face kind of stays the same, uh, no, changes size, but everything else stays the same because of the cropping. So either you turn off that dynamic cropping or what you can also do is from here, from the width, we can add a math. So uh, you can kind of check here what the minimum and maximum is of when you move away and closer to the camera. I found that maybe my, like 0 0.05 and 0 0.2 are kind of the minimum and maximum uh, range that I'm moving in. And here I might want to have a minimum of like 0 0.5 and a maximum of one of the phase scale. So I'm going to add a null here and call that scale. And now I can use that on the uniform scale here. So now, as you can see, when I move further back, all of the faces also become smaller and the same thing when I move closer. So this is something that you can do, but you absolutely don't have to. So let's look at how to make this look a bit prettier. So first off, we might want to go here and add a level. It's always a good idea, because now you can maybe go down with the gamma. You can change all of these values based on your light conditions. 
And then what we can do now is add a channel mix. We can do the same thing with a level. It's kind of almost cleaner here, I would say. Uh, we can turn off green and blue. And let's just copy this twice. Let's turn off uh, red and just do green. Oops. And here again, turn off red and just one blue here. And that then what we want to do is add a transform. Let's just copy and paste that as well. And on all of these transforms, we want to change this to pixels. I want to offset the first red one by 10 pixels to the left. And then here, the blue one, 10 pixels to the right. And what I can do now is add a composite. Add these all together and change it to maximum. Wow, so it look kind of interesting, actually, but not what we're looking for. <laughs> Anyways, now you can see we got that kind of chromatic aberration effect which uh, definitely makes the whole thing look even more interesting, I think. Maybe we want to go down here with like the alpha a bit more. Looking kind of cool. Then another thing is always like adding LUTs. Kind of like to add a cross here and then we can add the open color IO. I've got a whole tutorial on this and there's some free LUTs you can download. On here, you can go to file transform, turn that on and then select a LUT. And uh, now you can already see that difference from no LUT to full LUT, maybe 0.9 or 0.8 is really nice. And uh, yeah, it's quite the difference, I think. It looks much more cinematic. That's really cool. Another thing we can add, <coughs> we can use uh, circle X and circle Y also on, on the transform here. So the whole movement is a lot stronger. You can even, even type maybe like, times 0.5, so it's not as strong. Uh, you could also turn it off here. So you only do it on, on the translation of these circles. But uh, yeah, you really, there's there's kind of no limit here. Feel free to just kind of have only these few faces and then do maybe like full al alpha, which is kind of almost closer to the original that I showed you. And uh, feel free to use any kind of instancing here, right? This is just one example, which works well because it's kind of circular and that therefore kind of around the head. But you can use any any instancing network here. You can also change the uniform scale to whatever you like to work with. And um, you, can, you can kind of post-process this in any way. Feel free to uh, really mess around with the alpha. One last thing I want to show you here as well is that you can add a cache before the crop. And you can do maybe like minus 24. And now the movement of the copies is going to be delayed. And uh, I think that also looks really cool, especially with this kind of chromatic aberration effect. So that is one thing, adding a, a cache here. And then one thing we might also want to make sure of, and that's something that we might want to add here with the level before we composite, is, uh, that, yeah, we can have the level here. so. We can use the phase one valid to uh, to show this. So if there is no face in there, then it's just gonna like kind of not display the whole thing, which is which is good. Kind of uh, making sure that there's no bugs or that it doesn't look weird. And then last but not least, we can also add a lens distort here. And uh, before also we composite with the original. So for example, we can kind of add that more, more like a lens-ish kind of effect. So just feel free to, to play around with the lens distortion. I think that looks even more kind of like a crazy prism effect than when you do it without the lens distortion. So definitely check that out as well. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you to everybody who's supporting me on Patreon and who's been supporting me through all the last months. I'm very happy to be back and I hope you're well and I see you on the next video.